cancer. It's everywhere, literally. If I could ask all of the women in this room to take a look to your right, take a look to your left, one of the three of you will have cancer in your lifetime. Now, if I could get the men to take a look to your right, and that's all you need to do, one of the two of you will have cancer in your lifetime. Now, let's try it this way. If you know someone who has cancer, raise your hand and keep it up, please. If you know someone who has had cancer, raise your hand. Keep all your hands up. Look around the room. And while the statistics show that there is an increase in the number of people who have cancer, we also know that nobody touched by this disease is simply a statistic. I, like most of you, has have, have had my own touch points with cancer. And that's one of the reasons why I'm standing here with you today. Now, I have to be honest, on paper, it might look a little strange uh, that this liberal arts graduate who learned Russian when I was in middle school, high school, and college because I wanted to be a CIA agent, <laughs> turned stay-at-home mom, who became an entrepreneur, who got into politics a little bit, and then went back to my entrepreneurial roots. Seems strange, I suppose, that I would be standing here running a biotech today. I found my way into running a biotech because I wanted to use my unique skill sets to advance a technology that can bend the curve on cancer. The hidden link in everything that I've done in my career comes down to three Ps. People, possibility, and promise. And while the first questions I asked you highlighted a dire set of statistics, my talk today, I hope, is not as depressing as that might have sounded. The fact is, is that even though cancer rates are increasing, the number of cancer survivors are also increasing as the cancer death rate is going down. We are finally turning the corner on cancer. And the trends show that progress is being made, but there is a lot left to do. Today, I want to share a message about an ultra-small technology that can have a huge impact, a message of hope. Not hope that is a faraway dream for the next generation, but hope that is here, now, and delivered in a way that used to be the stuff of science fiction. Some of you may remember a movie called The Fantastic Voyage from the late 1960s. I have to admit, I wasn't born then, uh, but as the youngest of eight with six older brothers, I often saw movies that uh, many girls my age never imagined they would see. Take a look. But now, a film called Fantastic Voyage has broken through in an unexpected direction to create an adventure of astonishing suspense and beauty. One of the miracles of the universe. Four men and a beautiful girl off on a fantastic voyage, actually entering inside the human body, exploring an unknown universe, unknown dangers. Anyone remember that movie? Four men and a beautiful girl. <laughs> so the movie is about the crew of a miniature submarine and they shrink to microscopic size, and they are sent into the body of an injured scientist to fix a clot in his brain. The submarine is literally injected into the scientist, and they have one hour to fix the blood clot. And if they don't fix the blood clot, they'll revert back to the regular size. And as you can imagine, that would not have turned out well. <laughs> so. Now, at the, this movie at the time was absolutely fantastical in terms of what it was trying to communicate. Putting aside the bad special effects just for a moment, I ask you to not dismiss the idea completely. The good news is, is that we don't have to shrink anybody. We do need, however, smart vessels that have the ability to deliver drugs directly to a certain spot in the body as if the doctor was right there, just like the fantastic voyage surmised. 
So the concept of ultra small solutions like those found in nanotechnology are not tomorrow's science. They're here today. It's not science fiction. In labs in Minnesota and well beyond, these technologies are being developed. And nanotechnology can provide solutions that were only previously just dreamed about. And the potential for nanotechnology in healthcare is extremely exciting. So you might ask why. Why, with all of the money being spent on research and development, why are the, the diseases continuing to outpace the solutions? To be sure, there's progress being made. But the body is a worthy adversary. And fundamentally improving treatments for challenging diseases such as cancer have had a rough pathway. So it should be no surprise, because the body is a complex place. The body has tremendous ability to fight off diseases and cures. But diseases are smart. They find ways around the body's defenses by either impacting genes over time or manipulating the body's defenses or finding ways to get past them. And it takes drugs that are just as smart, drugs that are targeted to specific cells and drugs that have the ability to get there. Essentially, it comes down to this. If a drug cannot be delivered in a way that it can target a specific disease cell, we won't be able to treat that disease specifically. And if you can target the disease cell, but you don't have the ability to deliver that drug so it can reach that disease cell, we won't be able to treat that either. If you can target it and have the ability to reach that disease cell, but you can't get inside of it to deliver to the drug specifically inside of that cell, you won't be able to treat it effectively. So if you can't treat it effectively, you can't beat it. That's the challenge that we're facing. Billions of dollars are being spent to develop drugs that fight diseases, but this will not be well spent unless we also advance solutions that have the capabilities of getting these new drugs to where they need to go in the body. And that's why precision targeted ultra small vessels brought to you by nanotechnology have been developed by uh, companies like ours and the scientists across the country. These developments are revolutionary and critical. Let's connect the dots on nanotechnology and how it can be used in healthcare. Imagine nanotechnology with a brain, a nanocapsule that effectively is programmed to find a specific disease based on what we put on the outside of that nanoparticle. This ultra-small nanocapsule then is designed with the ability to navigate the body's maze and to find through its stealth pathways to get past the liver, which, by the way, is the area that stalls many therapeutic advancements. So this nanocapsule has the ability to get beyond the liver and deliver cells directly into a disease cell only while leaving healthy cells alone. These type of treatments should lower toxicity and bad side effects and improve outcomes for patients. So in order to give you a little context on size of a nanoparticle, because I tell you, it's really crazy when you think of how small they really are. Take a look at this vial. It's about a third full, up to about here. It contains over 10 million, or 10 billion, excuse me, nanoparticles. That's pretty darn small. 10 billion nanoparticles, what's interesting about that is that it's 10 billion vehicles for delivering cures for cancer and other diseases. Whether we're talking about creating therapies for cancer or other genetic diseases, at every turn, cell-specific targeted drug delivery could be transformative. Yesterday's fantastic voyage that we all got a chuckle out of up on the screen, are today's nanotherapeutics. These solutions can happen, and these solutions are happening. Nanotechnology, it's small, but its potential may pack a punch to knock out cancer. 
Using nanotechnology, we are on the cusp of enabling precision targeted drug delivery in a way that could catalyze the next generation of new therapeutics. So to finish this off, I'm gonna have you engage with me again and have you all please stand up if you could. If you, if you will, so in 2030, the man or the woman standing next to you may still likely have had cancer. But in 2030, when the TEDx attendees stand here and look to their right and look to their left, with delivery platforms driven by nanotechnology like those our scientists have developed, there is a powerful chance that each and every one of you could be standing next to a cancer survivor or be that survivor yourself. We can do better and we will do better. The life of every third woman and every second man in this room and beyond depends on it. Thank you. Thank you.